Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Mary and today we're going to talk about toothpaste. When I started my zero waste journey, I was pretty quick to replace my conventional toothpaste with a more sustainable alternative because I realized that my toothpaste came in an unrecyclable plastic tube. Yikes. And my first solution was a homemade toothpaste made from baking powder and coconut oil with a few drops of essential oil. But for so many reasons, I pretty quickly stopped using that again, mostly because it doesn't actually prevent cavities and also it was really gross. I talked about this recently in another video, which sort of inspired me to talk about this subject. Because my next alternative, my next solution was toothpaste tablets and I still use those today. The ones I have are from Dentaps, they contain fluoride and they're great to travel with. And I've been able to find them either in bulk or in pretty minimal paper packaging. So that's a pretty big win for the planet, right? Sometimes the products that seem and feel and look sustainable might actually not be more sustainable than conventional products. This is something that we have seen throughout the zero waste movement. There are lots of swaps that aren't necessarily any better and sometimes they're actually worse than what they're actually replacing. And today I've gotten my hands on a report that tackles toothpaste versus tooth taps to find out which one is more sustainable. So let's get into it. First of all, toothpaste tabs aren't actually toothpaste at all. It's a compressed powder containing things like xylitol, which is a natural sweetener, but that also fights oral bacteria. It also contains calcium carbonate, which is a chemical compound found in limestone. It also contains sodium carbonate, which is standard baking powder. And often these tablets contain cream of tartar as well, which is a common household alternative to bleach made from tartaric acid. And toothpaste has a little bit of a different ingredients list. One of the main differences being water, which accounts for about 20 to 40% of the toothpaste product. It also contains about 50% abrasives, including aluminium hydroxide or calcium hydrogen phosphates. But I think it's important to mention before we go further that a lot of these things, although they sound scary, aren't actually scary. On this channel, we are not scared by ingredients. Ingredients in things are fine, at least the majority of ingredients are fine, even if they sound scary. Anyway, I really want to work against this development where we're super scared of things that aren't natural, doesn't sound natural. Um, it's, 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 it's fine. Of course, not all ingredients are created equal and there are plenty of things we could say about ingredients, but from an environmental point of view, one of the main issues with toothpaste is its packaging. And while companies like TerraCycle accept oral or dental care product packaging, there is still a lot of it that ends up in landfill. In fact, one billion toothpaste tubes ends up in landfill every year. Moreover, many toothpastes actually have, according to a Dutch NGO, contains microplastic as well. With these facts in mind, it seemed like toothpaste tabs was an absolute no-brainer. And as I said, I've been using toothpaste tabs for years, loving them to bits. But recently, I think, during the last few months, I have been tagged in content and I've been sent links to an article, specifically a report about the impact of toothpaste tabs in comparison to toothpaste. And I think we need to take a look at this together. This is a life cycle assessment report or an LCA from Thailand. It's called a comparative life cycle assessment of toothpaste cream versus toothpaste tablets. And overall, I have seen a very little data like this regarding these products. So we're going to be using this report as the base of our analysis. But I do have some comments here and there regarding how this study was conducted that I will also go through. The study explores the use of toothpaste and toothpaste taps in two scenarios and they explain sort of where these products are coming from. Now, it seems like they're using two types of very specific products and not just talking about types of product. So it seems like two very specific instances because they're explaining that the toothpaste taps came a very long way and was transported via both trucks and planes while the toothpaste was more locally produced. And I think it's definitely possible to find toothpaste tabs produced more locally and toothpaste produced thousands of miles away. They're not naming any brands, but it seems very specific. And then it's calculated based on these product supply chains in relation to Thailand. In terms of how local production is, this isn't universal to all brands. I just looked up a few of the bigger ones. It turns out Colgate is tubed and manufactured either in the US or in Mexico. Contrastingly, the toothpaste tabs that I use from Dentabs are manufactured in Poland. 
This study accounts for the impact of using toothpaste tabs and toothpaste twice a day for six months. For that, they used one tube of toothpaste and a jar of 60 tablets of toothpaste tabs refilled five times. What I find odd here is that they're measuring or adding in the calculations of the impact of having the water run for two minutes a day while people are brushing their teeth. Are people letting the water run continuously while brushing their teeth? Can we stop that? I guess it's included because it's the expression of a typical consumer habit. So if that's the case, can we stop doing that? Please. The study uses a tablet measuring 0.7 grams. And for toothpaste, they use about 0.2 or 0.4 grams for each usage of toothpaste among adults. So we're realizing here that the sample size for toothpaste tabs is twice as high, but it's hard to regulate because the toothpaste tabs comes in the size that they come in. And you can squeeze the amount of toothpaste you need onto your brush. So there's a sampling regulation irregularity that we're seeing here anyway. And they also note that in their calculations, the packaging has been added as well. So the plastic tube goes to landfill and the glass jar that they have been using is recycled. Okay. Now it's pretty difficult to measure sustainability because it consists of so many different parameters. The method used in this study is called recipe and it takes all of the calculations of different impacts and different parameters and comes up with a point system that we can use. One method of doing it, there are other ways of doing it, but this is what the study is doing. The study compares toothpaste and toothpaste tabs based on their impact on damage impacts to human health, ecosystems and resources and 11 characterization factors namely global warming, freshwater eutrophication, marine eutrophication, terrestrial ecotoxicity, freshwater ecotoxicity, marine ecotoxicity, human carcinogenic toxicity, non-human carcinogenic toxicity, mineral resource scarcity, fossil resource scarcity, and water consumption. This took everything to not mess up these words, by the way. The LCA results showed that using toothpaste tablets slightly contributed to a higher score in all damaged categories than using toothpaste cream. Brushing teeth for two minutes twice a day for six months with toothpaste tablets accounted for 188 millipoints, while brushing your teeth with toothpaste cream was 163 millipoints. Millipoint is the unit of measure used by recipe to calculate the overall sustainability score. That's given to the products based on the collective data. Cleaning teeth with toothpaste tablets caused a serious environmental burden in all midpoint impact categories, except for fresh water and marine toxicity, human non-carcinogenic toxicity, and water consumption. And I even have a little tablet here to show you. So all the bold numbers is where the brushing your teeth with a toothpaste tablet is more impactful than using toothpaste. Something that was really interesting that I found through this report was specifically how much the user phase, the how consumers and individuals interact with the product has to say for the overall impact. For toothpaste tabs, 65% of the impact of the product came from how we used it. Whereas the remaining impact was divided like so. 20% of the impact was from raw material acquisition, followed by production, which was 4%, and transportation, which was less than 1%. Furthermore, the end-of-life glass recycling was also calculated, and it actually added a 10% positive impact at the end of life. For toothpaste, it's 80% of the impact that comes from how we use it in the use phase, whereas the remaining impact is divided like so. Raw material acquisition is 10%, production phase is 5%, end of life is about 5% from plastic and landfill, etc. And less than 1% again is transportation. Overall, when we look at the final impact of the product, so much of the impact comes from how we use the product and less than 1% in both cases comes from where the product was produced. As always, the impact of a product can be divided between manufacturers and users, as well as those who dispose of or recycle the product. But that's sort of the three main sectors where the impact comes from. And this study also suggests a few ways where manufacturers and users can improve the impact of the products. Tap manufacturers should reduce the size of the toothpaste tablet and reconsider material sources and explore other alternatives for raw material substitution for some of their inactive ingredients to mitigate the impacts and enhance sustainable toothpaste production. And honestly, I think this goes for both the toothpaste tabs and toothpaste cream. 
interestingly how we use these products can have a massive impact overall i don't think there's any rocket science here the longer you can make your product last the more sustainable it is however i would love to see some information in this report about how much or how little of the product is necessary to get your teeth cleaned because i assume the tablet is the size that it is because that's what's necessary and i would love to see sort of more information more data regarding if companies can even reduce the size of a tablet and what we can do design wise for toothpaste manufacturers to make sure that consumers are guided towards the proper dosage the study cannot control exactly the amount of toothpaste they analyze as it's different each time how much toothpaste an individual uses however the amount is completely static for toothpaste tabs and the amount of product used in the analysis is actually really significant interestingly i don't know if interestingly but at least Building on this, data from 2021 from the British Dental Association showed that about 10% of toothpaste is left in the tubes when they're discarded for landfill. The study writes that even though a plastic-free concept and reusable package have been applied in the case of toothpaste tablets, a major concern still exists from a vast amount of water consumption and wastewater generated during brushing and a high impact on ingredients production. So maybe I'm missing something here. One second. The total water consumption for both toothpaste and toothpaste tabs is listed in this tablet, in this figure. And it seems like the difference is 0 0.001 millipoints. To me that doesn't sound like a vast water consumption. It seems like the vast water consumption they are referring to is the fact that consumers leave the tabs open while they brush their teeth and I think that's pretty easy to combat and has nothing to do with the impact of the manufacturing of the product. Anyway, I think the use of vast water consumption sticks out to me in a weird way here. By the way, the unit of measure, I can tell now, is not millipoints, it's cubic meters of water. Anyway, still not very significant, especially not when we're determining which product is more sustainable. That is a tiny, tiny difference. Maybe I'm missing something, but it seems like this is a very dramatic conclusion to draw. Anyway, I hope that you guys are still with me. Please stay with me because this we're building towards an end and a conclusion. Okay, so brushing your teeth for two minutes twice a day for six months with the toothpaste tablets accounted for 188 millipoints, while brushing teeth with the toothpaste cream was 163 millipoints, making toothpaste the more sustainable choice. However, when using a more comparable sample size of toothpaste tabs, namely at 0.4 grams, the results showed that the environmental impact and the environmental burden of toothpaste tabs was reduced to 154 millipoints, thus making them more sustainable than using toothpaste. I wouldn't expect consumers to care a whole lot about this, to be honest. I'm mostly interested in sourcing up materials and I think it's good that we have data that makes it easier for companies to produce products that are better, that makes them more easily available to us overall. But based on this study, I wouldn't say that all toothpaste is more sustainable than all toothpaste tabs. I think overall there is some questionable methodology going on in this report. But the study did actually shed some light on something that's quite important, namely the fact that not all toothpaste tabs are inherently better for the planet just because they look it. And overall, I think this is very important to remember when we as consumers are being advertised products in one direction or another, that it's really easy to make products seem more sustainable by taking a form or a structure that we know and criticizing it or by putting it in different types of packaging. And sometimes it is definitely more sustainable to go for another option than the conventional product. It's just not always the case. I think one of the main takeaways from this video should be that there are more effective swaps that we can make in our households that are not related to what kind of toothpaste we are using. That actually how we use our toothpaste and whether or not we let the water run while we do so, how much toothpaste we're using has a much bigger impact than choosing a state-of-the-art trendy product that we see advertised to us anyway. I still love my dent tabs and I'll keep using them. I love them for traveling, but I won't recommend everybody, especially people on tight budgets, to go out and invest in something that is so much more expensive than the conventional product when the differences are that minimal. Overall, I would say that whatever toothpaste option you're using is probably fine. It's how we use it. That's the main takeaway here. But I think these are some pretty good pointers to go forward with. Turn off the water when you brush your teeth. 
make sure that the packaging of your product is completely empty before you discard it. Use small amounts of the product within the reason, by the way, within the reason, because you still need enough product to actually get your teeth clean. But I've always been told that you need sort of like half a pinky's worth of toothpaste when you brush. That's what I was told from my dentist. So you don't need to do what they do in the commercials to sort of lather the entire thing and cover the entire toothbrush and toothpaste. That's unnecessary. You can also support local or more local-ish manufacturers and recycle or reuse packaging. Also, I think it's important to be cautious with products that are marketed as all natural or with ingredients that are marketed as natural alternatives to fluoride. This is going to be a little bit of a hot potato, but what I have been told by experts, what I have asked my dentist is that there is really no alternative to fluoride that works the way that fluoride does. And you're not supposed to consume it or ingest it just like with shampoo, but it is the most effective way of preventing cavities. And I have shit teeth, so I'm not gambling that shit. And that was it for this video. I hope that you liked it. I would love to know if you want more deep dives because I'm thinking of doing laundry sheets and uh, cotton buds as well. So let me know if you want to know about those. This is a very nerdy series that we are starting out. I realize a lot of people might not find this interesting, but at least we are developing the tools and comprehensional skills to understand this type of reports and data together. So I hope that you guys are along for the journey. I think this is incredibly useful, especially when we see things online where we only see, especially so on social media like Instagram, where I've seen this report being mentioned and used as a source many times, where we're drawing conclusions extremely quickly based on titles and headlines. And we're not all about that. So Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want me to go into a deep dive with next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.